Anybody that is following Badger's continued descent into um, or challenge or um, coping methods with degenerative myelopathy. For any of you who don't know what it is, it's um, the canine version of what Stephen Hawkins had. Um, there is no cure, it just continues to get worse. Um, it starts with a wobbly back end, then they lose total rear motor ability. Um, that normally comes with incontinence. Um, they can continue in a wheelchair or a cart, you may have seen videos of them, um, until the front end starts to go. When the front end starts to go, that then leads on to the respiratory system. Um, as you can see, he's still got a very, very strong front end. He loves to dig with his front end, so hopefully that will keep, that hobby of his will keep him um, nice and strong at the front end. His wheels arrived today, but they need to be put together. Um, he isn't quite ready to be in wheels all the time. As you can see, he can just about manage at the moment. Um, but he needs to be trained in wheels if, he's go if they're going to be any success. So we will be spending the next couple of weeks training him in his wheels so that he can move on to them, hopefully successfully. This contraption that he's wearing is a p p pick pick them up harness i don't know what its official name is hey badge <laughs> but it helps us manage to help him um, without too much interference when he has fallen down on the back end it has this rear handle um, which enables us to grab his back end and lift it up from the floor also we have trained him getting in and out of vehicles uh, to put his front paws onto the back ledge and we will then lift his back legs into the back of the van uh, he went to physio this week and his crossing of his legs was the biggest concern really um, which is why he now has these new strings attached on either side now this contraption probably looks rather strange to anybody um, who is watching but basically his back legs would constantly cross over and he wouldn't, he, literally they would cross over every few steps. Um, this, one of those boots has fallen off which is why he's dragging a little bit worse than normal. Um, I'll adjust that in a moment. Th those strings come down either side, they're not strings, they're, um, oh, what are they called? Ah, I forgot what they're called for camping. Uh, anyway, they've got a bit of give in them. Um, so if he gets tangled, he can pull his legs around and get out of them. They're not as um, tight as strings. Anyway, um, someone will tell me, I'm sure, what they're called. Uh, they feed down either side of, the side of the harness from the front end, down the sides of his back legs, and attach vel via Velcro straps to his back feet um, and that keeps him from crossing over. The physio said that you can buy these officially contraptions that do this um, but with the help of a couple of carabiners that I had and the cord that she had and some velcro straps that she had she put this together for us. Um, he will be in his wheels in a couple of weeks pretty much permanently um, so this is to see us through a couple of weeks right um, what else can I tell you about what he's wearing his feet on his feet we have been through various things on his feet what he is currently wearing today is that we've got two favorites basically um, one are I believe the Trixie boots um, they seem to stay on him quite well. In a minute I'm going to grab that rubber, rubber paws cover off of that left foot because it's going to fall off. Um, but what he's got on here are these socks. They've got rubber bases to them. Um, socks that go up his foot and then a Velcro strap that goes round the sock to hold it in place and then for added protection we have put the 
rubber paws um, covers over the bottom of his over the top of the socks just because um, if we've had a bit of rain then it might get they might just get muddier quicker and I haven't got enough to keep going through the wash and back out again in time um, he's just picked up a bit of a pace when he is full of energy he can go at a fair pace um, and his back legs will just flip out behind him he does all the movement really in the front end and he moves really well but for the last I don't know maybe four or five days he's not had that level of energy in him so maybe we're past that stage now maybe he's not going to do it I just saw him then trying to pick up a pace and he struggled with it uh, but the ground is quite hard today and a little bit uneven we haven't got the easiest of ground here to walk him on but it is all private so we know we're not going to move bump into anyone and although he is around dogs all the time his tolerance probably due to a feeling of vulnerability seems to have lessened um, oh I'm not gonna video this he's going for a poo or should I video this okay so he can cope he can still do a poo He's not totally incontinent. Be back with you in a sec. So, yes, so he can. He, yeah, bless him. There used to be a time when he hated the thought of us picking up his poo and he used to back into bushes or if there were no bushes, he'd back up a tree and try and hide his poo so that we wouldn't pick it up. Um, but gone are those days. These days, he is mid walk as you saw and all of a sudden oops needs to go so um he's he's not doing it inside it's definitely sort of like a program response to being outside a uh, natural response to being outside the fresh air the stimulation makes his bowels flow uh, but he doesn't get much um warning of that Purdy in the background they're chasing a butterfly I don't know if you saw it I don't think they have butterflies out in well they might oh, they probably do in Egypt I don't know I can't remember seeing any um, anyway this is about badger so you can see the first sign of a dog with generative myelopathy is that you will notice that their back claws will start to wear down and um, it's because they start to drag their feet slightly and you may not notice it to begin with. And you may suddenly think, oh, okay, his back claws are a bit short. And then you'll go, oh, look, yeah, they must be short because he's catching them as he's walking. And you may not think much of it. And then over the next months, you will see him getting worse and worse. He first started dragging his feet. Um, oh no trying to think he had a wobble in August um, and he was diagnosed in November I think he was dragging his feet by then the time just it just moves by so fast and you don't realize um, we were told in November that we would have until August this year we are now just at the end of May now is he going to do this on his own sometimes he can and sometimes he needs help it's not the easiest to get into do you want to go in badge right I might just pause for okay he needed a little bit of a hand to get in there um, but it is a fairly big drop badger loves to lie in water <laughs> and this might seem a bit murky but it's it looks worse than it actually is. It's not that bad. Come the height of the summer, it's horrific because it is clay-based waterhole here. It's all right, Badge. It's all right. I'll come and help you. I thought he was going to lie down for a bit longer then. Right, shall I help you up? Okay, he changed his mind. He decided he wasn't ready to get out. 
we've got to get our paddling pool up and running soon in the back garden he loves to do this and the weather is warming up so much it's so funny for a dog that doesn't like to go out of his depth he really does to just love to lie down in water okay I don't know if I can video this at the same time I'll probably drop my I probably dropped the phone in the water at the same time, so I'm going to pause. There we go. We are out. That was very, very quick, although you wouldn't know because <laughs> I do want pause at the time. What's up, Maggie? Come on. So, yes. So, where was I? We He was diagnosed for sure in November. We were told we have until the end of August until he will be at the point where we will have to say goodbye to him. That was most heartbreaking news ever. Ah. There we go. These brambles do not help. And I think he's slipping a little bit. I am going to see to that boot right now. Okay, we're back on track. You had a lively moment there where uh, <laughs> he wanted to play with Honey. You can't play when you're in your harness, sweetheart. We do have some time in the evening where he does play uh, in the garden with the other dogs and he has no harness or anything on then. He's just free and he can do what he wants to do to his, the capability that he has Ugh. but we're not asking anything of him he's like only a few steps from the door to come in if he needs to so it is end of April now I'm just about to head into May we are six months since diagnosis of having a maximum of nine months with him this is our last three months and they say when they start to slide they will slide that back end doesn't look like it's quite doing what it's meant to be doing does it with that harness I have to adjust the length of the straps um, we are going to miss him so much. He has been the most incredible dog. I have been so incredibly lucky to have him in my life. Oops. See that crossing over? That's what he was... He Without the strings on, he would be doing that. He had got to the point where he would be doing that every few steps. So the strings really have an effect on him, which is good. We do what we can for him. The physio was amazed that his legs were not, his feet were not bleeding. Um, so anyone who has a dog that is suffering with this, please do take care of those feet. Keep them covered as much as possible, especially when you are on any hard surfaces. If you decide or you're restricted to walking on concrete, please, please do make sure that you keep your dog's feet covered padded shoes or socks they've got enough to cope with you don't want them coping with bleeding feet as well um, the incontinence thing is a mystery um, I'm not ashamed to say that Badger sleeps on my bed with me he has slept permanently on my bed with me for the last four and a half years um, before that, he used to get up on the bed, he used to sleep on the bed, and when I um, turned the light out, he used to get down onto the floor. But then we moved house, circumstances changed very slightly, and he sleeps on the bed with me the entire night. Um, if he were incontinent, I would know. <laughs> there, is, there is no way that I am going to miss... Uh, noticing that my dog has become incontinent when he sleeps on the bed with me and he's a lazy devil he will quite happily join me in bed 
when I, if I'm having a lazy night, I'll go to bed at about 8.30, 9 o'clock. He will quite happily join me then. He may not get up for last wee wees that the other dogs have when Brian goes to bed at 10, half 10. Um, and then he may not get out of bed until half 10 the following morning. I get up, I let all the dogs out at about seven in the morning probably. He doesn't want to get out of bed then. Sometimes he might get up at eight o'clock um, if he thinks that he needs, definitely needs to go for a, a toilet break. But if, if he can hold it, he will stay in bed until half 10, 11 o'clock at the weekends quite happily. Um, and I have a white throw on my bed so if there were any accidents it would be very obvious um, and there haven't been and the physio is a bit flabbergasted over that bitch he really doesn't understand how he cannot be incontinent by now um, we plan to start hydrotherapy next week we were going to start it this week but brian is away on a packed dog training course and so he isn't able to um, be around to help either take badger to hydrotherapy or to look after the daycare dogs so we've just postponed it by one week but we will book him in um, for the following week and we will let you know how he does. I'm losing sight of him now. He's going into the depths of the undergrowth. So thank you all for taking the time to follow Badger's blog or vlog. Uh, he's going to have a munch down on some dog mercury right now. So there you go, guys. There's my boy. Thank you all for following him. Take care and we'll send you an update soon. Bye.